esteemed chairman i would like to thank our saint petersburg colleagues for inviting me here we all like saint petersburg we love coming here now i'd like to talk about also modifying agents and the application in early breast cancer We know that the types of osteopathologies in our oncological patients can be divided into two major groups, bone metastasis followed by various complications requiring special treatment and financial investments and loss of mineral density of bone on the background of anti-tumor therapy. It often happens at early breast cancer and as complications there can be fractures which have negative effect on the development of disease, mood and other aspects. Also modifying agents first appeared uh, in 1980s such as bi uh, biphosphonates Everything started in Oncological Center in Moscow. That was Bonifos, uh, intravenous infusion or tablets, and then a lot of other medications appeared. And we know Denosumab, which is a monoclonal antibody. So here we see the definition of osteoporosis made in 1994 by WHO. Osteoporosis ranks fourth among causes of disability. So the most frequent disorder in human being is osteoporosis. You see picture of the norm and disease. Osteoporosis on the background of anti-tumor therapy develops much faster than in natural settings. Here on the light you see the blue columns Mineral density of bone is being lost in man and woman. This is the norm, but age-related. But red columns show how it happens on the background of anti-tumor therapy. You see annual loss in percentage of um, mineral bone density loss. You see mechanism of action of osteomodifying agents. First is bisphosphonates, which are analogues of natural substance in bone. And these bisphosphonates affect osteoclast zone where there is bone resorption process. Besides, they are absorbed by bone and accumulated for a long time in bone tissue. Here you see molecular participating in osteoclastogenesis and in all process related to bone tissue. And this is rank ligand rank receptor, receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, and an osteoprotegerin which neutralizes rank ligand, doesn't allow to bind with rank receptor and activate rank receptor, 
and it slows down the process of bone destruction. Then also map monoclonal antibody, which is called proleoric shiva, binds with rank ligand, playing the role of natural estoprotegerin, neutralizing rank ligand. Here you see differences between denosumab and bisphosphonates. You see the main bisphosphonate, which is wisely used. This is the medronic acid. The medronic acid containing two atoms of nitrogen. This drug is more active versus the ones which contain one nitrogen atom or nitrogen free. Zolindronic acid is infused, uh, captured by osteoclasts and accumulated in bone matrix. Bisphosphonates slowly return to system circulation from bone tissue and are eliminated through kidneys. Denosubop is introduced subcutaneously, circulates in the blood, doesn't accumulate in bone tissue, is not uh, eliminated through kidneys. Estrogens in the body are important, playing major role in suppressing expression of rank ligand by osteoblast stimulate creation of OPG and reduce bone re resorption. Mineral bone density goes up with low level of estrogens, there's reduction of EPG, elevation of bone tissue resorption, and there is bone resorption process. The cause of deficit of estrogens in order breast cancer is known. This is suppression of uh, over ovary due to chemotherapy, Elasha rush antagonists. They are very negative in terms of mineral bone density, ovarectomy, hormone therapy with adjuvant aromatase inhibitors, and anti estrogens. Here you see several charts showing how many trials were organized devoted to oster modifying agents. You see early trials with colantronat, abendronat, tableted forms for women, menopausal status, evaluation points were different. Multiple trials uh, with adjuvant show different results, but two trials pre presented by DL polls showed reduction of bone metastasis with the use of bisphosphonates and overall survival increase. Here you see recent trials of for zolindronic acid. There were a lot of them. They assess mineral bone density and uh, relapse-free survival for pre- and postmenopausal women. There were two trials devoted to denosum map. ABCG18 in 2015 more than 3,000 patients were involved and there was a trial last year STBCG12 this trial was organized in Austria The enrollment period was from 1999 until 1996. 
the women with positive hormonal receptors first second stage cancer neoadjuvant chemotherapy was conducted duration of treatment three years after surgery uh, patients on gazerolin and randomized into four groups they compared tamoxifen plus tamoxifen with zolidronic acid and estrozole versus an estrozole with zolidronic acid two medications were compared and they assess survival without progression here you see that with hormone therapy mineral bone density went down especially when there was a variant suppression when they were on Zolodex. There was maximum reduction with anastrozole and tamoxifen. When they stopped using Zolodex, these indicators improved significantly. ABCG12 relapse free survival. Difference between anastrozole and tamoxifen was not found. These two medications give similar effect. Here you see the results in the group with zolindronic acid and uh, without it, survival without progression. These are insignificant, but the difference is, is in favor. Those groups which receive zolindronic acid, zolindronic reduced the risk of breast cancer progression by 36%. The mean follow-up period was 48 months. Here you see relapse free and total survival, overall survival. It was shown that at final analysis, 94.4 months passed. Uh, Premenopausal women on Zolodex hormone therapy plus minus zolindronate for, for three years had risk reduction of progression by 3.4% and risk reduction by 2.2%. But it's not significant. So the internet four milligram every six months plus adjuvant therapy plus zolodex increases efficacy of adjuvant hormone therapy. This effect is long lasting. ABCSG12 uh, trial, and Dr. Gnant, who was one of the authors, was reading lectures. They decided to introduce it into the standards. But uh, there were some groups who were alert to that treatment. So this is not final data, additional trials are needed. Uh, whether bisphosphonate has to be introduced into a given treatment or not. Several studies were conducted with uh, ZFOS, uh, the metaphermata, uh, adjuvant synergy trials in different countries, but uh, the design of the study was similar. Here you see the design of the study, two groups, patients with early breast cancer, the first uh, third stage, um, menopause uh, with uh, hormone positive receptors received litrazole, uh, both groups, but one group received uh, zolidron acid 4 milligram every six months and started to receive it uh, the same time as hormone therapy but the second group also received zolidron acid but uh, after, uh, in case of there are no um, issues complications uh, if there are type of fractures or uh, multiple fractures uh, without uh, symptoms, then they received uh, zomedrol acid. 36 uh, a 36-month uh, analysis showed that when simultaneously uh, patients received 
up front, Zoledron Acid, they sh um, showed better results than um, those who received uh, Zoledronate uh, on uh, later stages, and this decreased the results um, by uh, 41 percent. Here you see a very exact data, left and right uh, tables, quite clear, so that uh, in upfront uh, uh, administration of the ACID gave better results. Here the same two groups are compared. The lower uh, one without the uh, when when the acid was administered later only because of some kind of complications in various parts of skeleton. So here it's very clear, uh, the results are clear. The same is related to fractures uh, after 60, uh, 36 months of therapy in uh, upfront group, the amount of fractures and osteoporosis is lower than in group that took uh, the acid in, on later stages. We also conducted a big uh, meta-analysis uh, on earlier breast cancer and uh, it was uh, published in 2015 in the journal Lancet. According to the result, randomized uh, studies uh, in adjuvant showed uh, more than 18,000, showed that um, oral administration of coldronate, bondronate, and uh, zoledronate IV decreased the uh, frequency of relapses in bones uh, by 34 uh, percent, but only in patients in monopausal uh, period, so it's very important. Here you see that the best results uh, were received in menopausal women or in older ages. Meta-analysis showed then that the effectiveness of adjuvant therapy in early breast cancer uh, with bisphosphonates is statistically uh, significant in favor of uh, groups who received uh, bisphosphonate in distant metastasis, metastasis in bones, uh, lethality uh, of uh, breast cancer is uh, lower uh, by 1.8 percent, comparing with those who didn't receive the, the ACID. And um, here you see the difference uh, by 3.3 percent in patients in monopause. The graphics show it quite clearly. Also taking account the um, women who have uh, breast cancer and uh, the, the all the big numbers, the d difference is quite significant. So bisphosphonates decrease um, the risk of survival in postmenopausal uh, periods and um, decreases the risk of uh, osteoporosis and pathological fractures in patients in monopause. And also the uh, effect doesn't depend on the receptor stages, uh, lesions in lymph, uh, lymph nodes. Um, the uh, Azure research 3,360 patients also uh, looked at two groups, uh, standard therapy and standard therapy with uh, Zolidron acid uh, during five years. And the um, uh, medicine was introduced uh, in a certain uh, scheme, six dose every one, four weeks, then eight dose uh, in uh, longer periods. So. Of what did they compare the um, uh, survival rate without progression and um, then 
survival rate without progression and uh, inv of invasive illness and also safety of the treatment. Survival rate uh, without progression. Uh, here we don't see much difference between two groups. We don't we don't see a significant difference, and also in terms of uh, general survival rate. But uh, when they compare compared to subgroup of menopausal women, especially those who uh, went through five years of treatment. Uh, they realized that the influence of uh, zolidron acid influenced uh, influenced the uh, the uh, survival rate of of uh, cancer breast cancer patients in monopausal status. Azure is uh, one of the biggest research of the third stage that uh, published research on of 10 years. They were published last year and the results of this longitudinal study. I, I must say that um, uh, during the past 10 years, uh, biomarkers of uh, uh, breast cancer are studied a lot and there is a, a protein called MAF, M-A-F. Uh, its code is 16Q23 and it's related to metastasis in bones of uh, breast cancer, not uh, to other organs. This um, gen gene controls uh, migration and adhesion um, and also differentiation of also clusters. I've consulted my colleagues who deal with uh, this type of um, uh, illnesses. Unfortunately, our colleagues do not know about this uh, gene. And I also learned about it only when I um, started the uh, recent research on the topic. Uh, Gen Gen V Moth is an oncogen uh, that is associated with metastasis in bones. Hyperexpression of uh, Moth gene uh, is assessed by Fish method. Increase of uh, 16Q24 is associated with. Uh, a uh, bad general survival rate and metastasis in bones and expression of uh, MAF protein um, is also um, correlated with uh, hyperexpression of 16Q24 um, by uh, method FISH. Spanish uh, colleagues worked on this topic and when conducting the Azure research, uh, researchers de determined uh, the uh, um, the survival rate uh, depending on the menopausal status. And something that we've already discussed. Uh, you see that's uh, more than five years uh, post-menopausal. Um, women have uh, much better results of this type of therapy. And then uh, the survival rate in patients uh, without hyperexpressions of gene MAF, non-invasive uh, breast cancer, uh, the left and graph, and the best results were reached uh, by patients who receive zolidron acid and when hyperexpression is observed uh, it is a bad prognosis factor if there is no hyperexpression then this uh, influence is not uh, given in terms of uh, metastasis in bones this is the uh, total frequency of metastasis in bones uh, as the first relapse and um, the group that received um, Zolidron acid had better results as for um, um, 
survival rate without relapses, depending on age group of patients. Uh, here we see the worst results in younger patients, uh, younger than 40 years of age, and better results in uh, senior patients. They also compared such uh, different parameters on these graphs, but I believe uh, I've covered the most important points. So here are the results of a 10-year-long uh, study that uh, proves that Zolidron acid uh, improves the results of uh, early breast cancer treatment. As for denosunab, ABCG18 study uh, with two groups. This uh, drug was administered subcutaneously and uh, to one group, and uh, the other group received placebo. And the main task uh, to assess the time before the first uh, significant fracture. And uh, these are the, um, the results of the study according to the main goal. It was uh, reported at ASCO 2015. The group that received denosumab showed better results, and the risk of fractures is uh, lower in their case. The yellow line shows the group that received placebo. Dr. Gnant uh, promoted this result. Uh, stating that uh, din denosunab uh, makes uh, lower the risks of fractures lower. Therefore, it is uh, necessary to uh, administer it. And we have to put uh, this uh, medi medication in our regulations and standards. Here, um, you see that uh, denosumab uh, lowered the um, frequency of uh, significant fractures comparing to the group that received placebo. And uh, um, on the background of uh, adjuvant hormonotherapy, denosumab can be prescribed in patients in monopause in early breast cancer without increase in toxicity. Uh, and uh, we've, we've been looking forward to the results of another longitudinal study, and we took part in it. But unfortunately, the protocol was uh, too sophisticated, and the study in the end didn't show as much as was expected. And uh, in any case, nowadays it's uh, it's been proven that donosumab uh, decreases the number of fractures. But as for the use of uh, donosumab in adjuvant, uh, and if we have to put it in our regulations, as for example, zolidrone acid. Uh, one, it it can be taken one in six months uh, during hormonal therapy, as um, it influences uh, well. It's beneficial for bone density, and it, it's been proven. So it's been included in the standards. After the analysis of 2015, they also said that bandronite uh, daily in pills also has beneficial effect, and uh, the pills uh, can be used uh, with the same purpose. But as for the denosunab, uh, for now, this uh, product to uh, increase uh, the um, density and to lower the risk of fractures um, has not been proven. So, 
this is uh, the conclusion, and uh, that's what I wanted to tell you. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.